I'm Leslie Wall, and I'm so excited to be back with our second episode of Faith Through Fiction. This series is aimed at sharing stories that help us on our journey towards salvation. Some of you may be thinking, really? I should be thinking about that now? The answer is yes. As Christians, everything we do should be for the glory of God, and that includes the books that we read. We should be constantly bettering ourselves and finding ways to live a life that pleases the Lord. But that's easier said than done. As a teenager, it's not easy focusing on God when you have the whole world ahead of you. Maybe you're looking for your first job, thinking about your first date, or just trying to stay awake in class. Regardless, the last thing you're probably focusing on is God. And society doesn't make it any easier when God is pushed out of the public arena and Christians are often ridiculed or misunderstood or simply shunned. So sure, it's easier to keep God under wraps or push him away and focus only on ourselves. But the truth is that God didn't put us here for ourselves. He has a plan for all of us and we can only know that plan once we come to know him. Well, how do we do that? Well, for starters, we can put him first. And that's the topic for this month, putting God first. So let me pass you on to fellow author T.M. Gowett. Hi, I'm T.M. Gowett, and it's my absolute pleasure to be introducing this month's featured Catholic Teen Books author, Carolyn Astvalk. Carolyn is the author of three contemporary Catholic romance novels, two theology of the body romances for adults, and one chastity-themed coming-of-age story for older teens and adults, rightfully ours. She's also a contributor to the short story anthology Secrets Visible and Invisible. Carolyn is a member of Catholic Teen Books. She's a CatholicMom.com and today's Catholic teacher contributor, and she's vice president of the Catholic Writers Guild. She resides in Hershey, Pennsylvania, with a husband and four children. We're so pleased to have Carolyn discuss this month's teen struggle of putting God first and how Catholic Teen Books' first anthology, Secrets, Visible and Invisible, can help in understanding this topic. Internet sources say we make 35,000 decisions a day. That's a lot of decisions. And even if that number's wrong, and we make only a quarter that many, that's still nearly 9,000 decisions a day. Now, maybe only, let's say, a hundredth of those are moral decisions. That's 90 decisions. We have 90 opportunities a day to do the right thing, to choose God and put Him first above our own selfish wills. Most moral decisions we make are very small things. Should I pay for that pack of gum that slipped to the bottom of the shopping cart? Should I rush through that yellow light and run the red light? Or should I repeat what so-and-so said about somebody else last night, knowing that, of course, my friend won't tell anybody else? The thing is, those little decisions prepare us for big things. And the saints, as always, have great advice for us on this. St. Teresa of Calcutta said, Do small things with great love. And St. Jose Maria Escriva said, Do everything for love. That way there are no little things. Everything is big. And many of us are familiar with St. Therese of Lisieux's Little Way, in which she chooses her own path to holiness through God, through choosing Him first in all the little deeds, which ended up making her a doctor of the church. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, we read, The person who is trustworthy in very small things is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. So we can see how important those little decisions are. In Secrets, Visible and Invisible, seven Catholic teen books authors contributed short stories that illustrate what it means to put God first. Sometimes the characters do put God first, and sometimes they don't. But mostly, they're more like us. They're inconsistent. Sometimes they do the right thing, and sometimes they don't. So let's take a look at each of these short stories briefly and see how we can learn from these characters about putting God first in our own lives. In Recreation by Cynthia Tony, the young man Elijah has already opened himself to putting God first by making time for him and reading God's word, being open to his promptings, and so when an opportunity comes up to help his elderly neighbor, Miss Vivian, he can do that. 
In The Portrait of the Firestarters, Teresa Linden's character, Caitlin, is a wonderful example of putting God first in small ways, just in her character, by being virtuous, by being modest in her behavior and in her dress. In More Precious Than Gold, Leslie Wall shares the story of two young couples who donate of themselves, their time and their talents, to help children in a camp for disadvantaged youth. And in my own story, Behind the Wheel, Sean consistently chooses wrong and his decisions snowball. First, he shirks his duty to his brother and disobeys his father, leaving his little brother home alone. Then he takes his father's truck without permission. And after that, he drives it without a license. And so when a really big decision comes up, a big dilemma, it's hard for Sean to choose the right thing. He's not prepared for it. In T.M. Goet's story, Sister Francesca, we see another character, much like Caitlin, who's virtuous. She's generous, her behavior is exemplary, she's modest, and not only does she prepare herself to make big, important decisions about her vocation and her life, but she influences Jason, who's able to see how his little decisions can prepare him for a big decision to answer God's call in his own life, in his own way. The Underappreciated Virtues of Rusty Old Bicycles by Corinna Turner is set in a dystopian world where Margot and Bain have to get the little things right because they really need to get the big things right because those are life and death. Because in their world, you can be killed in a very hideous way if you believe or if you are caught at a clandestine mass. And Margot so beautifully illustrates how important little things are because she's continually turning to God for guidance, for inspiration, for help. And she also goes to her guardian angel for intercession. And so when big things happen, Margot's prepared. And finally, in Susan Peake's story, On the Brink of Hell, we visit Dario, who as a mercenary soldier has put money first. He's not made the right decisions, and it's not until he has a mortal injury and is confronted with his own death that he begins to see the effect of his decisions, his selfish choices that ignored God through his own life. So when we silence God's voice in our lives, and we don't choose him in the little things, we really diminish our ability to choose him in big ways. And so these characters provide us with great examples of how to do that day by day. And sure, we'll be inconsistent too, but the more we practice, the more we'll get it right so we can choose God first when it matters. Thank you, Carolyn. I'd like to add a few other book suggestions by Catholic teen book authors that feature characters that put God first. The first is Crusader King by Susan Peake. This is a fictional version about a real king of Israel during the Crusades. Uh, despite having everything stacked against him, his young age, a deadly disease, enemies that were determined to destroy him, even some among his own ranks, and a kingdom that was doomed, King Baldwin never once wavered in his faith. He always put God first in any decision he made. Uh, Three Things to Forget by Cynthia Tony is another great example. Uh, in the final book of her contemporary Birdface series, the lead character Wendy comes to an amazing realization. When she sees an incomplete drawing of herself, it dawns on her that she is like this picture, unfinished, still learning and seeking the truth about herself. She suddenly understands that God will guide her to completion and that by putting him first and in control of her life, he would help her to become the adult she could be. Um, and this theme of putting God first uh, is prevalent throughout Corinna Turner's I Am Margaret series, specifically in two stories, The Siege of Reginald Hill and this one, Brothers. Uh, this is a dystopian series where the government has total control over everything and religion is outlawed. But Margaret's brother Kyle is completely devoted to, his, to the Lord, and against all odds placed before him, he decides to answer God's call to become a priest, putting his very life in jeopardy. So those are my suggestions. TM, what do you have? Thanks, Leslie. Awesome list. And I also have some great suggestions. For example, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Treachery and Truth by Katie Huth Jones. Now, this is a historical fiction story of Wenceslas. You know the song, Good King Wenceslas? Anyway, 
From the time he was a boy, Václav, a.k.a. Wenceslas, put God first in everything in his life. And at times, it would have been way easier not to. I mean, he had strong pressure to keep true to the old pagan traditions, from foreign rulers, some of his subjects, and even his own mother and brother. But his faith in God was unwavering, even when it cost him his life at a young age. The second story that I have is, you can see that, Life-Changing Love by Teresa Linden. This is the second book in Teresa's West Brothers series. And in this story, we meet twins again, Keith and Jarrett, and they are two of the West Brothers, and they've been inseparable always. Well, Keith is witness to a life-changing event where God shows him in no uncertain terms that he loves him. And so Keith makes a promise to God, followed by a physical statement to cement the deal, a powerful statement that offends Jarrett to no end, a statement that places God in the forefront of Keith's life. Well, this changes a slap in Jarrett's face. He feels betrayed and he disowns Keith. You'll have to read the book to see how it all plays out, but this is another example of someone putting God first, even if it means risking a close relationship. And my third example, I have Freeing Tana Rose. This is from my Faith in Kung Fu series. Now, Gabriel Livingstone is the main protagonist throughout the series. This extremely handsome teen surprises and inspires everyone with his devotion. So Gabriel looks to God in everything, waking up, he gives his day to God, continuing his dialogue with him throughout the day and consulting him before making big decisions. And his attitude towards anyone who questions his faith or ridicules him is complete indifference. He just doesn't care. He loves the Lord and every time he's asked about his faith, he responds with such nonchalance that those who are just coming to know him are taken aback. In our modern world, it's cool to fit in. It's cool to be hip or bad. But Gabriel is none of those things. And he's so beyond okay with all of that because he loves God. Putting God first is not an easy thing to do, especially when human instinct is to be selfish. Pleasing ourselves is so much more rewarding, right? More immediate. And when putting God first means going against a friend or possibly, possibly offending them simply by your desire to please him, well, then that can cause a lot of internal conflict. But we have to remember that. That is when devotion really counts. Just like Keith, we may have to live with losing a friend or a brother. But when we put God before everything, from the moment we wake up, with our morning offering to the last prayer and act of contrition at night, when we keep him in our minds throughout the day, dialoguing with him, consulting him, looking to him, offering up our sorrows and thanking him for each blessing, when we act on his behalf and not our own, doing his will, speaking his words, then we can truly come to know, love and serve him so much better. And in doing so, we become the Christians that he desires us to be stronger and more prepared to go into the world and live it for him. So that's it. Thanks for joining us for Faith Through Fiction. Until next time, check out more of our edifying titles on Catholic Teen Books, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and sign up for our monthly newsletter. From me, T.M. Gowett, and fellow Catholic Teen Books author, Leslie Wall. God bless.